chopped liver, Jewish pate. What makes it so seductively good? Ribbonus and chopped onion. All right, we should say what ribbonus is. No, okay. not everybody knows what ribbonus is. Ribbonus, a it's, gift of God. It's fried is what onions. It means. Yeah, yeah, it's fried onions and chicken skins. Fried chicken skins. It's really it's what's left over. When the, the, the crackling that's left over when you render the chicken fat. Exactly. And with a little onion flavor. It's the Jewish flavor. variation of pork cracklings, right? Yeah, we, should, we could say that here. Sure, of <laughs> And this, of course, is the uh, chopped liver. Okay. Beef or chicken? Chicken. 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 What chicken. else? What I like else? beef, actually. I like Better half and than, half. Right? Yeah. Oh, I like chicken. I like chicken. There you go. Actually, I know one rabbi who says that the only true Jewish dish is chopped liver because you had to get rid of all the blood in the liver, right? And so you broil it, and it was so rubbery that you had to do something to make John, it. John, here comes oh. the, the yeah. Yeah. part. Oh, boy, the schmaltz. <laughs> the boy, the boy, the boy, the fat schmaltz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flambe chicken liver. <laughs> this is our Jewish Caesar salad. There's, there's no anchovies. Don't worry about it. Caesar was Jewish? <laughs> Hyman Bookbinder, whom everyone calls Bookie, was for many years the Washington spokesman for the American Jewish Committee. He's also known around town for his great chopped liver. So when I make my chopped liver, I'm generous with the onions. I use three good-sized, you know, medium to large onions with three eggs, hard-boiled eggs, and roughly a pound of chicken livers. And I dice the onions. I've already peeled these, but I just dice them. It doesn't matter how big or small the dicing is because they're going to be sautéed and then chopped. Uh -huh. But you see, it's very simple. Uh, anybody can do it. You don't have to be a gourmet cook to make absolutely delicious chopped liver. So here we break them up and I'll put them into a, uh, a pan that's already heating with some vegetable oil. There we are, almost done. And um, now you're looking at the very unorthodox ingredient that once made me famous because I was once an article in the Washington Post referring to this, and I got literally scores of calls immediately, and people still remember. I put a little bit of green pepper, or oh, about a half a pepper. This one happens to have a little bit of red in it. That's and clear. I saute it with the onions. And a little bit of pepper just adds a little zing to it. And uh, I like zings. Here it is. We got the pan that's uh, already hot. And um, there go my onion. Uh, it's going to sizzle. Oh, I forgot to cut this one up. There we are. And put it on a fairly, make it a fairly hot uh, You're wire not cook. Crying, huh? Yeah. <laughs> It looks so like tell me why, why do you like to do this so much? I, I know the first time that I cooked with you, you had on Meet the Press on one channel, TV right in front of you. Yeah. And then in the other room... Well, uh, Joan, you know that I've been a, a, an activist, uh, a public affairs uh, activist for a long time. I combine my public affairs interest mm -hmm. with my cooking interest by saying, why do I just have to sit in front of a television set and watch? or right. run over radio and listen. I will watch one program, tape another one on another. Uh, Sometimes if I have to, uh, or if I want, if I'm interested in a third program that's on at the same time, I'll even make an audio recording from my radio <laughs> for the third one. So uh, I combine the two, and I get a sense of satisfaction because I have something I can share with friends, and I like eating nice, old-fashioned Jewish foods. So there it is, the, uh, the sautés are now only when they're about half done. The, you don't want them too brown. You mm -hmm. want them just the beginning of brown because now you're going to add the principal ingredient, of course. What's the is most the important? Livers. Now these are livers that uh, uh, will, they're fresh, be sure they're fresh. And I'm going to put them in now okay. and sauté them with the onions for, for probably uh, six or seven minutes. And um, don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. You don't want it too dry. You right. want to have some more. And when it's all done, uh, after you've mixed all these ingredients, you have to remember another important ingredient, 
while that's doing, let's let's, let's finish peeling these. Okay. These are three hard-boiled eggs. All right. Let now, let me also make the obvious point. Yes. You don't have to be too precise. You know, go to Joan's book, see what she says. It'll be roughly what I'm just saying to you. And do what but, you want. But after a while, as my mother says, "Viffleness van them." Whatever it takes. <laughs> uh, if you like it a little bit more eggy, put another egg in. Instead of three, make it four. If you like it less onion, make you know, and then. You'll also spice it up with some pepper and salt. The easiest thing in the world to make. The sautéed onions are going now. Do you see the way it's developing? Mm -hmm. You haven't koshered your livers, but if you were kosher, what oh, you yes. would do is yes. you had to get rid of the blood because you can't have any blood sure, sure. Mm -hmm. in Jewish cooking. Yeah. So what you do is you put them on a rack, you cut them first, over a pan and then mm -hmm. you just put them in the broiler for a few mm -hmm. minutes until the blood is out and then you'd wash them to remove any excess blood well, then you yeah. would saute them yeah and uh, it won't affect the taste significantly but you may want to use a little bit more liver uh, livers well, because right. you reduce the volume somewhat by, by doing that also while this is a chicken liver Right. that we're making. You can use calves liver, you can use other kinds of liver. Right. When I was a child, then, unlike now, chicken livers was a great luxury. Really? They were very expensive and rare. So we would use beef liver and calves liver as often as we uh -huh. did the uh, chicken livers. But there's a little optional, if you really want to remember your mother, yeah. remember what you grew up with, take a little chicken fat uh -huh. at the end. After. Right. You, you don't saute it with chicken fat, Take a heaping tablespoon of chicken fat uh -huh. and throw it into the mix at the end, and you'll get that little additional delicious Terrific. little flavor, and you'll, you'll remember your mother and your family with very, very good feelings. Okay, this is just about ready. I think there's somebody here who wants to see your chicken livers. I have to go to the door. I'll be right there. Mmm. I am out. Look, you have invited somebody here who loves your chicken liver. Who's that? Cokie Roberts. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, oh, you're funny. You know, I was about to tell her the story. Oh, well, tell me now! Tell oh. me now! <laughs> Koki was speaking at some major event, um, a, a luncheon speaker, and uh, I was anxious to see her. Uh, I went, but the program was delayed, so it was late. I had to get to another appointment. I went over to Koki, and I said, "You know, I'm." She says, "I know who you are." She says, uh, matter of fact, I'm going to talk about you. <laughs> I said, you're going to talk. You're, oh, you're, you're, you're going to talk about me? But I had to go before I could hear. So I called my friend, a friend of mine, to say, what did Koki say about me? <laughs> she said she had company recently. No, it was and Passover. It was, it was Passover. <laughs> and she wanted a good chopped liver recipe. Mm -hmm. And she went to Joe Nathan's book, and there it was, Bookie's <laughs> Chopped Liver. So. But they didn't tell you the whole story? No. Oh. There was more to the story. You see, I, I made up your, your uh, chopped liver, and it was good, but it wasn't the way I would have done it, you know. So the first <laughs> thing I did was I pulled out, as I always have handy here, I pulled out my Tabasco. Oh. And I added a little Tabasco, and that, that was good. That made better. <laughs> then I added a little cognac. Better yet. <laughs> You still called it chopped liver. Oh, right? yeah, it was delicious. It was good stuff. I recommend <laughs> okay. the Tabasco well, and the we'll cognac. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're from Louisiana. That's right. It's Look very it hard to eat food that doesn't have a good bit of spice for people like me. Yeah. Well, have fun cooking. Yeah. Enjoy yourselves. Well, good thank to you, see God. you. Eat yeah. well. <laughs> thank okay. you very, very much. Well, rest assured, this is one ingredient I never thought I'd have with my chopped liver. <laughs> <laughs> We're all ready. Now the chop has to come into I it. I want to see the chop. It's called chopped liver. It's very simple. So I take the sautéed onions and a little bit of my green, that green pepper I put in. Yeah. Uh, here I have my three boiled, hard boiled eggs. Hard boiled. You don't want them soft. Right. So I'll cook them for about 10 minutes. Anyway, here it goes. We'll just put it all in here. And I'll use this marvelous instrument that I've had for at least 40 years. Right. But no newfangled pots and no, pans no, for you. No, no, but you can use the more traditional kind of uh, the chopper, um, right. round. Um, but not uh, a food processor. You don't like not, a food I don't processor. like food processor because it makes it too fine. I like okay. to have a little. Anyway. And you like to use your arms. Here's a great one. And the reason I use this old pot is that it's flat on the bottom, and this one requires a, a okay. flat pot. Here it is. And just chop. Just chop. And I don't know whether I mentioned the, the um, 
Do you put salt and pepper in? Oh, of course I put, okay. the, when you weren't looking, I put the okay. salt and pepper in. <laughs> um, again, a matter of taste. But I'd say roughly for this much, um, like a teaspoon of pepper and a couple of teaspoons of salt, because you have a lot of stuff here. You have over right. a pound of stuff. Anyway, keep chopping it, and, and we, you see it's beginning to look like chopped liver, right? You can use it as a pre-dinner nosh. Absolutely. Uh, sitting around the, the, the uh, coffee table. Um, right. um, you can use breadsticks or um, uh, bagel chips or pumpernickel or hollow. Or you can use it as an appetizer, as a first dish in a meal. Mm -hmm. And uh, just put a, oh, roughly the size, let's say, of an ice cream, um, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a ball, but don't use your don't use your dairy ice cream dip for this. Right. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> and um, put it on a leaf of lettuce uh -huh. and serve it. And from this amount of roughly a pound of liver, you ought to be able to get uh, anywhere from uh, six to eight uh, good portions sitting at the table. Okay. There it is, just about there. How's it look? It looks about ready. You ain't you to taste it? I absolutely I am. am. All right. Let's taste it. And okay. then we'll then we'll pretty it up on a plate, okay? All right. Here you are. Should we say a, a, a blessing? Sure. A blessing over the chopped liver. <laughs> Here we are. Mmm, delicious. Mm. That's before the chicken schmaltz. Cal Calvin Trillins, author, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Trillin, author, humorist, Thank you. and gastronomic Thank you. gadfly, remembers his mother's way. chopped we were, liver. Uh, my mother was a, was a fairly terrible cook, <laughs> and um, she did make some Jewish things. Um, she made just awful chopped liver. <laughs> and um, at some point, I did a, um, a speech in Chicago for a Jewish group, and um, I was um, asked before I went uh, by Rabbi Pupko, the guy who organized this, uh, for a title for my speech. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't usually have titles. And he said, no, we need a title. And I prefer long titles with colons <laughs> in the middle. So I said, okay, how about farm price supports, colon, a 30-year overview concentrating on but not exclusive to soybean pricing structures. And Rabbi Pupko said, perfect. So. <laughs> About an hour later, he called and he said, I'm terribly embarrassed, but the nice lady who was typing up the brochure said, what's the Jewish content in that? I said, do you have another title? And I said, well, I've thought of one since then. And he said, does it have a colon? I said, oh, yeah, it has a colon. And the title was Midwestern Jews, colon, making chopped liver with miracle whip. And um, after the speech, a woman came up to me and said, uh, that was a very interesting metaphor. I said, that was not a metaphor, madam. That was a recipe. That's how my mother made chopped liver. Uh, my mother thought that um, chicken fat was déclassé in some way. And um, so she stayed away from it. And she didn't even use mayonnaise. She used Miracle Whip. Uh, and chopped liver was awful. I never knew quite why until my sister told me years later about this. In some circles, Mrs. Rubin is known as the author of Dora Lee Potenkin Rubin's Jewish Family Cookbook. In other circles, Mrs. Rubin is known as actor, singer, Mandy Potenkin's mom. My mom actually sang a song to me when I was a little baby. <laughs> sing the song? No, I used to sing it to him when he went to sleep. Right. I'm going to hear it. It was, Ilalula, Ilalula, baby. Would you like the moon to, no, would you like the sun to play with, or the moon to run away with? Isla Lula, Isla Lula, baby. I never knew the rest of it. And what we it. did was on my, uh, on my Yiddish album, the very first song that I do is a song, a very old, famous Yiddish song mm -hmm. called Bells, Mein Shtetel Bells. Oh, God. How's that go? Oh, and you heard it. The song goes, Bells, Mein Shtetel Bells, Mein Heimel Avich, Hod my Kinder Shuyulin Kabla, Zentia Hamoyo Gevenen Bells. And what it means is, have you ever been to Bells? Have you ever been to my old town, my old home, mm. my old house, my old neighborhood? And the way I started it was I got a woman named Judy Blazer mm -hmm. to sing my mom's 
uh, lullaby. So the first thing you hear on the album is and so that's my ma's. Uh, so There's we did that. So so much emotion in Yiddish, huh? Yeah, there is. It's just like Jewish humor. You really can't translate it. It doesn't. It loses something in translation. It really does. And what about cooking? Jewish cooking. Well, if you really adhere to the traditional way of doing things, no, I think it's okay. I think that though it's evolved, as your cookbook shows, and from yours. Europe. Well, no, I'm more American, but I mean, you show the evolution of Jewish cooking from mm -hmm. Europe to the United States, from the South to the East to the North. I found it absolutely fascinating. And uh, what it does show me, though, is that as far as Jewish cooking is concerned, I'm sure it's almost any ethnic cooking, there really isn't anything new mm -hmm. under the sun. We just all put a little different twist on it, that's all. And I think that's what's so wonderful, that the food has carried the tradition from generation to generation. So what are we going to do today, Ma? Well, we are going to do a vegetarian chopped liver. With the advent of all the health interests, I thought, let's go back to a vegetarian dish. It's a Actually, show. it's been made for years, but most people kind of put it on the shelf. When did you first make it? But we it? never had vegetarian chop liver no, growing up. No, I never we did. We had the we... stuff that killed you. <laughs> <laughs> we had the real thing. The real thing. I started to make it again about three, four years ago. Uh -huh. What you, you just made me wonder, which I never asked you, is who taught you how to cook? Was it Grandma Ida or Grandma no. Scudder? Grandma Ida no, was my, gra my ma's my ma, grandma. and Grandma Scudder was My Grandma her, Scudder my was a grandma. club lady. She was never home. <laughs> but where did you learn the Jewish cooking stuff from? You just learn it as you go along because everybody is doing it. Did yeah. you learn a lot from Aunt Ida and Aunt Lillian? No. Grandma Celia? And, well, Grandma Celia, the gefilte fish, yeah. Oh, that was, I remember yeah. growing up when Grandma Celia would come over, and Grandma Celia would always complain about her arthritis in her hands and everything. She couldn't do this, That's she couldn't part do that. Of it, right? It's part of a major thing. I mean, you have to have a six hour discussion about how my hand, my hand is <laughs> evil, if I do. If I make the fish in the hand style, it'll hurt my hands. Need, needless to say, forget the fish, you wash your hands 52 well, times she, a day. Well, she hand. had a problem. She yeah. really yeah. Now she'd be on Prozac. But back then, she just <laughs> kept washing. But anyway, uh, she would make fish, and the whole house stunk. But she made gefilte fish like nobody's business. But my favorite thing that Grandma Celia made was always the onion bread. Pletzel. Oh, oh I love pletzel. I'm telling you, it was incredible. And she'd complain about the hands, too. And if she wasn't complaining, she'd oh, well, i got to see Dr. Newman about my feet, because standing <laughs> in the kitchen with my feet is a hole. But how do you like the bread? And, and it was incredible. She never did cook much. She never did. But those two things. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's amazing. You know, growing up as a kid, if you ask me, what do I remember food-wise? Yeah. I remember the pretzel. I remember the knedlach that my ma would make, the chicken soup that my ma would make. But most of all, I remember the holidays and the parties and the tables. And, and people. And right. the people. And, and, you know, Passover and Hanukkah. And what my ma did... And with my Aunt Ida at the time, mm -hmm. when my mom wasn't doing it, either my mom was doing it with mm -hmm. Aunt Ida and Aunt Lillian, the, they were such gorgeous tables. Mm -hmm. They were. The food, the setting. And I never really appreciated it as a kid until we recently had a Hanukkah party here. Mm -hmm. And I stopped the Hanukkah party and I said to everyone, I said, you know, I never thought my family would get to benefit. Oh, from sure. what I got to benefit from. Because my wife didn't have all of this. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, my wife got to know my ma. She understood it all. Mm -hmm. She understood how important it was to me. And it was important to Catherine. And Catherine would make the tables just like my mom would. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's beautiful here. I've been it's here for It's just holidays. beautiful. And, and I said, you know, if I had one dream for my kids, it was that they had those family tables with the... With the food, and you know, we would, you know, we make the lamb, and uh, you know, in a certain way, and but, but you know, when Passover comes, it was very important to me that we follow the same route, route, you know, which you got to have the kanedlach first, and it's got to be followed by the mm -hmm. gefilte fish. No, no, exactly the fish first, honey. I'm sorry. <laughs> so let's make vegetarian chopped liver one of the late Isaac Bashevitz singers favorite recipes that he used to walk down from around here, right? He lived right, uh, he lived four blocks away from here, and right he on 86. And walked down to the famous and get the recipe. Right, matter of fact, uh, we're, we're, we're right here on the Upper West Side and the 86th Street's called Isaac Bashevis Singer Boulevard. Really? And he lived right down the block. Oh, We'd wow. see him all well, the time. So this is a very appropriate recipe, okay. even if it's not Chicago. So here you've got peas and... I use peas and string beans, but you really can use almost any 
vegetables. Some people use lentils. I just don't happen to care for lentils, well, okay. so I don't use lentils. And, Is it a personal and thing that they have to, to be you canned, when you were a right? Uh, yeah, actually, if you want to take the time to cook them, you could do that, but <laughs> I guess no. this recipe was devised for ease. Now, why don't you put in the egg yolks, Ma? Because they're unhealthy. Well, now, supposedly, if you read the New York Times on Wednesday as opposed to on Monday, it'll tell you that the egg, egg yolks <laughs> well, are okay. If you read it on I'll Friday, you it'll tell you it'll kill you again. <laughs> if you're going to eat the chopped liver then on Wednesday, then you can put in I'm going to kill yolks. myself right now, Ma. Now, protein. <laughs> we sauteed the onions for close to an hour. I think that's the trick. I think it's a trick to And they're very cooking. caramelized, yeah, and... What does it mean to caramelize the onions? You see how they are? Yeah, and they what does become that mean? Well, they become glazed almost. And they're almost, they're so sweet. They're and sweet. is that just from doing it in butter? This is done in peanut oil. It doesn't matter what you do it in as But the as point is you cook them very, very slowly. Ah, because Catherine cooks, them, my wife cooks them in peanut oil also, but instead of caramelizing them, they get a, a wonderful uh, <laughs> burnt, crisp <laughs> fire effect. <laughs> that is the most unique thing. You didn't put in the egg whites, Ma. I will. They, they pulverize too fast. And walnuts. I, I have a feeling that the one thing the I've learned... Walnuts also go in. Some people use pecans. Either one are okay. You, you have to put the nuts in if you don't want them? It's not on your diet? No, look, I cheat all the time. I think it's that you, you have to, I, you probably don't have to put the, I mean, since the, you don't have to do anything. This is a recipe you really can play around with. You really can just buy it at the store, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can, not out my way. Uh, but the really important thing. This is kosher salt, because I think it has a stronger flavor. Why? I never did know why. Well, maybe you should find out. It's bigger kernels. And it's a coarser it's salt. It's a much coarser salt. Just some black ground pepper. Some. It's Jeez. the taste. <laughs> well, you need it. You need it for this. She yeah. believes in salt. That's good. I Only for that. this. I don't believe in salt in most of my recipes yeah. anymore. Okay. You believe in God? No. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting nervous that the egg whites aren't in, Mom. They'll go in right okay. now because... I was, uh, I was a little panicky. Because you want texture, isn't I right? want more texture, and they would become so and pulverized. Like yeah. Flavor. Presentation is everything. Right. <laughs> It is. Well, I'm a strong believer. Food has to taste good and has to look good. Unless you're starved, and then you just open the refrigerator and take whatever you see. <laughs> the leftovers, right? Now, let's so this is a good alternative to chopped liver. Oh, it's wonderful. It's now, great. It really is You great. taste this, Joan. Tell me if there's enough whatever. Okay. We can put our fingers in, right? And I'm going to show you what the finished product can look like. Mmm, good. Wonderful. Hmm? Mm, what do you think? I love it. Great. This is Belgian endive. Mmm. That looks beautiful. You Just can get at the fanciest oh. dinner party. Can I eat one? Even on the Upper West Side, right? I love it. I'll have one too. Or you can just serve it in a bowl, surrounded good. by crackers. This is oh, a very guy. healthy uh -huh. appetizer. I think it's attractive. Warm. Warm. You can just leave it in the freezer and <laughs> oh, serve it on your finger. I, I really <laughs> didn't bring him up that way. <laughs> It's great, Mom. It's great. To learn more about Jewish cooking in America with Joan Nathan, visit us online at www.pbs.org. Companion products for Jewish cooking in America, including Joan Nathan's updated cookbook, a CD of the music score, and a two-hour video of series highlights and recipes, are available by calling 1-800-235-3000. Credit cards are accepted. Jewish Cooking in America with Joan Nathan is made possible by the Joseph S. and Diane H. Steinberg Charitable Trust, proud supporters of the arts, children's causes, and the preservation of Jewish heritage, and by Hebrew National, proud sponsors of Jewish Cooking in America, serving you and your family traditional kosher franks and delicatessen products since 1905. Hebrew National, we answer to a higher authority and by Lenders Bagels. Our idea of a perfect day is warm and comforting and satisfying all around. Lenders Bagels, the perfect circle. And by the following private individuals and family foundations.
This has been a co-production of Joan Nathan, Frappe Productions, and Maryland Public Television. This is PBS.